Today I'm going to talk to you and demonstrate how to overhaul traditional sashing case windows. I don't know how much of the audience is experienced in sashing case windows, so I'm going to try and base my talk to suit all knowledge levels. Um, components, first I'm going to run through the component list. This will mean when I do my demonstration, hopefully all know what I'm talking about. So the outside frame we've got here, this is known as a case. But inside the case you've got two sashes, you've got a top sash and you've got a bottom sash. The junction here between the uh, bottom rail of the top sash and the top rail of the top sash, this is called your meeting rail. Between the sashes, you've got what's called as a, a parting bead, and then in front of this, you've got a batten rod. Externally, I would try and swivel this round, but it doesn't move very easy being soft ground. Externally, you've got the external sill. So, running through ironmongery, again, we'll start at the top. This one doesn't have it. Some sashes, top sashes do, some top sashes don't. A lot of people keep their top sashes fixed shut. The reason being, they're so high up, nobody can actually ever really access them. It's another maintenance issue. Some people just keep these fixed. This one has roped. Nope. This one has roped. Um, but it's not got what is known as a sash eye. Normally you've got an eye here, and you have a pole with a hook in it, and you can pull the sash down. On the case, there's four pulley wheels. There's two here, which serve the front sash, and there's two at the back which serve the top sash. On the side, sorry you guys won't see it here, but on the side here you've got a rope clutch. This is used for gripping your rope for if you need to swing your sash inwards. On the meeting rail between the two sashes, you've got a sash fastener. This is used for, one for security, you can clamp your sashes together and nobody can pull your bottom sash up when they try to access your house. It also pulls your meeting rails together and it stops any drafts coming through here. On your top sash, somebody's removed these at some point, but you have what's called a sash stop. Again, this is a security measure. It means you can only open the window up a set distance from the meeting rail. So here you've probably got three inches you'd be able to open that up. That means nobody can climb through. It also allows a bit of ventilation within the home. Um, and then on the bottom rail of the sash, you've got your sash lifts. On this batten rod here, you've got easy clean hinges. These are some sometimes known as simplex fittings. If somebody says simplex fittings, that means you've got the hinges here and you've got what's called a thumb turn screw. This just makes it easy for removing this batten rod off. You can swing the sash in and it allows you to do any external maintenance, any decoration work or cleaning the sashes. When I do my demonstration, I'll show you that a bit further in detail. Um, this covers all the sort of components of your sash and case windows. Anybody have any questions at this point? Yeah. Oh, great, moving on. So, common faults with sash and case windows. I'm going to run through some of your common issues that happen with them. So, snap ropes, this is your biggest, um, this is your biggest common fault with the sash and case windows. Over time, these become perished and brittle. If you imagine you're sliding your sash up and down constantly, these eventually become frayed and they do snap. Drafty windows, again, old traditional sash and case windows, they do tend to get a lot of drafts within them. The, you can draft proof your sashes, which I'll talk about further when we do the demonstration. Another reason you get drafty windows is, if you imagine you've got timber rubbing on each other constantly, this is wearing down the paint that's on it, it also wears down the timber, and that's just creating a gap and drafts can come in this. This is when you use your draft proofing exercise, it helps take up these gaps. Another thing is, if you've got moisture content, so when these sashing cases are already being manufactured, if there's a moisture content within the wood, which there will be, at the time everything fits perfectly, slides up and down perfectly, the timber dries out, the, na the timber naturally contracts, and then again, drafts can get in through this gap. Potty missing or damaged glass, well there's a prime example of a piece of damaged glass. The original um, glass within sash and case windows, single glazing, it's not toughened. These are really vulnerable and they do tend to crack pretty easily. Potty, I would swivel this round but like I say I can't because it's on soft ground. Potty, it becomes again brittle. Because it's exposed to the elements, you've got rain hitting it, sun, it's constantly under the elements. This just becomes brittle, it eventually cracks and over time when you slide the sashes up and down, it falls out. To help minimise that happening, 
you need to maintain external decoration. And that's what a lot of the problem is with sashing case windows. People don't upkeep the external decoration. If that's maintained, it helps project, prevent any rotten sashes, rotten cases, putty falling out. And then your external sills, that's another big common issue is rotten sashes. And I'll might see this if I lift this up. Maybe you can see, maybe you can't. You can see there, that's a prime example of nobody's done any maintenance work to that cell. There's no paint in it. When you've got the rain, driving rain, driving wind, snow, hitting the external face of the sashes, it runs down the sash, sits on the cell, and if you've got something like that, the timber's just going to absorb that uh, moisture, and again, it's causing it to rot. So, demonstration, I'm now going to demonstrate how to fully re-rope a sashing case window. And I'll also cover some of the repairs um, that we just spoke about in a bit more in depth. So, if you've got a snap rope, you'll tend to have one side will be snapped. If you need to repair it, repair it you need to remove your sashes. Do both ropes. I'll show you how to do it. It's just as easy to do the two as it is one. If you replace one, you could be a year, two years down the line and then the other side snap. You have to go through the same process. Um, so, for removing your sashes, what you need to do is, this side where your thumb turn is, unscrew this, and this should pop out. The other side, because this has got easy clean hinges on it, I think the screws will be holding this batten rod in place. Normally this will be, if you haven't got these easy clean hinges, this is just nailed, you just gently have to pry this off. So what I'm going to do here is just unscrew the screws enough to be able to release this batten rod. to remove the ropes off the sash. So what you need to do here is keep a hold of your rope and cut, try and cut down as low as you can, as close to the top rail of the bottom sash. And what you want to do here is gently drop this down as far as you can go. You can see I'm right on the tail of the rope here. That's as far as I can go. And then you gently just drop that and that falls within the pocket space. Again, do the same this side. This side is slightly different because you've got a clutch here. That would actually hold that rope in place. But for the purpose of this exercise, we're replacing the ropes on it. So again, we'll drop this down into the pocket. And that's that. That's you now ready to remove your box sash. So you simply lift that out and lay that to the side. Within the case here, you've got pocket covers. And this is where you access the weights. I know today I can get around the side here, but if you imagine this was in a reveal, you wouldn't have access to the side of the case. So you need to remove the pocket covers. So here, we need to pull out the parting beads between the sashes. I tend to leave whatever Whatever I'm taking out, so I'm taking all the left hand components out, I'm putting them to the left side. When I do the right side, I'll put them to the right. It just means when you're reinstating them, you know what side they've came from. And you don't get them confused. So now we can remove the pocket covers. And this is where you can access the weights. So that's your bottom sash weight. Now, top sash is the exact same process. So you want to pull this down as far as it will go. 
same idea. Cut the rope. And drop this down as far as you can get until it hits the pocket. What you don't want to do is cut both the bottom sash and the top sash. This is quite a small window, so there's only one weight for each. If you've got a big window, sometimes you can have these doubled up. So you can have two weights on that. And if you cut that and all the pockets, eh, all the weights are jammed in the pocket, it can be an absolute nightmare to try and get them out. So make sure you remove your bottom sash first and then do your top sash. Again, drop this down into the pocket and then you remove it. So you'll probably see there that the top sash weight is smaller than the bottom sash. When we start doing, going through the demonstration a bit further, I'll run through how you weigh your sashes and how you know what size of weight to use to counterbalance the, the sash with the weight. So we've got that removed, we can now remove the top sash. So this is your ideal opportunity to carry out any repairs. You need, what I'll do, I'm just going to lay it on the bench, but actually I'll do it here because you'll get a better idea of seeing it. If you need to carry out any repairs to your sashes, so let's say you've got damaged glass. The potty is actually in not bad condition on this sash. But if it was cracked or brittle, you would lay it flat on a bench and you would need to chip the potty away. I don't have time today to show you actually how to do it, but I'll run through the process of how you would do it. So you chip the potty off all four edges of your astrocals. You remove the pane of glass. And then on the inside of the astrocal, You've got a small bit of putty between the timber and the inside face of the glass. Again, you chip this off. To install the new glass, you use what's called linseed putty. When you're using the linseed putty, don't just take it straight out of the tub and try and apply it. Get in your hands and work it in your hands. It makes it a bit easier to use, softer, and it makes it more pliable. So what you do is you put a small amount of putty around four, all four edges of the astrocal. You offer your glass up and push it in. If you're putting single glazing in, don't push all your weight on the glass. Because it's only 2-3mm thick, your hand will go through the glass. Push, put the pressure on the outside edges of the glass. And you'll know you've put enough pressure on it because you'll actually see the putty squeezing out between the inside face of the glass and the astrical. When you've got the glass in place, get yourself some really small pins and just put a pin in. One at the top, one at the bottom, one at the side and one at the other side. This just holds the glass in place. Until the putty goes off, it's still very soft. Birds, starlings especially, love pecking the putty out. Um, so the last thing you want to do is put your new glass in, putty it in, and then the birds come and peck all your putty out, and before you know it, your pane of glass is lying on the floor. So when you've got the glass in, you've got a nail on it, you would flip it over to the inside face. You would use either a putty knife or a sharp chisel, and you would clean the putty off. All you do is just hold your chisel or your putty knife flat, run it along like that, around all four edges, and this cleans your inside face. You need to do that for when you're re-putting the sash externally. So when you do that, this would be a this is sitting at a bevel just now. That would be straight because that is a, a glazing check for the window. This will show you the inside face of the astrical. That is where you need to finish your putty. So when you've worked the putty, you've got it in your hands. You squeeze it between your hand, you push it out with your thumb around all four edges. It is, it does take a bit of technique, it takes a few times doing it, it's, it's quite hard to do it like that. When I was an apprentice I got taught, roll it up in a sausage shape, offer it up as a sausage and then fold it out, like, press it out like that. It does make life a bit easier if it's your first time doing it. The more you do it, the better you become. I've seen guys who can do, they'll have it like this, glaziers and they can actually run down both sides of the astrocals and they can do a window in no time at all but it takes a bit of practice to get to that stage so once you've got your putty on use your, again use your putty knife or your chisel you hold it flat and at a slight angle and then you draw it back to create a nice smooth surface and then you do this round all four edges until you finish it in place what, what you're wanting to see is from the outside face, you can't see the astrocals, and then when you look from the inside face, you don't want to see any putty. So you want your putty to be finished, finishing in line 
with your glazing check. So that's what you do if you replace with single single glass. If you were to put double glazed units in it to improve the efficiency or any minimise any heat loss through your um, through the glass of the sashes, it's the exact same process. But this time you need to route her out the glazing check. So like I mentioned before, single glazing is two three mil thick. If you're putting slim light glazing in, thinnest this comes in is fourteen mil. The existing uh, depth of the glazing checks couldn't accommodate a fourteen mil piece of glass. So you actually have to route up your glazing checks deeper to create to take the double glaze unit. It's the exact same process. So rather than using linseed putty, you have to use butyl. The oil in the linseed putty has a reaction with the double glaze units and it causes them to fail. So using butyl, exact same process. Putty up the astrocol, uh, use the butyl, putty up the astrocols, push the glass in, and then use the butyl on the outside face. So that'd be how you um, reglaze your sashes. So um, what we're going to do now is actually re-rope the sashing case windows. So for this, I've got some samples here which I'll pass around. Um, <coughs> You need sash cord, you need what us Scottish joiners call a moose, and sash tacks. So I've got in here some sash tacks, a cut of a rope. If you just want to have a look at it, feel free, pass it around and amongst yourself. If you're not interested, just pass it on to the next person. And then when it comes to the case, you can pop it in, please. So, open your sashing case windows. You need a moose. A moose is essentially a weight on an end of a piece of string. This is just an old piece of lead. It's just pressed around the rope with pliers. You can use a cut on a chain. I've seen guys using a screw. It's just anything that's got some sort of weight. You can offer up to the pool wheel and drop down. So for re-roping your sashes, you tie, if that out of the way, you tie your moose onto the rope. You want to come down 70 mil or so, 3 inches, and tie a knot on it. Then you want to come up, create a loop, you're not actually tying a knot this time, but you're just creating a loop. Put this over the sash, near the head of the uh, rope. Pull that tight. And now you're ready for pushing these through the pulley wheels. I always start with the pulley wheels closest now. It doesn't matter if you do front or back, it's just always the way I've done it. So, push this through the pulley wheel and it drops down into the pocket space. So I can see this is here. I pull this up until we're ready for fishing that sash cord through. Now this can, sometimes these go through no bother, sometimes it can be a bit of pain. So that's went through no bother. So what we do now is we pull this down through the pocket until we pull the sash cord out the other side. Now we do the opposite side. So because we've got a clutch here, we need to go up through the clutch. If you didn't have the clutch, you can just bypass this. So we go up through the pulley wheel into the pocket space. And then, oh, there's me not take that, oh, this, the weight out from that other sash. Pull this through, you need to feed it through the clutch and then again up through the pulley wheel and down. Now it's the same process for the top sash, so what you're doing is going diagonal to the back pulley wheels. Oh, so, through the pocket, offer it up to the pulley wheel, and you have to pull that down. 
So this is to do, the way I'm doing this here is you're uh, roping all four windows, uh, all four tuning wheels, sorry, at one time. And because we've got the touch in it, it does make life a bit more difficult. And then, opposite side again. So that is us finished with the moose, and that's us finished feeding the ropes through the pool wheel. You'll know you've done this right because it, resem well, it resembles a salt tire. That's a very saggy salt tire, but it does resemble a salt tire. <laughs> so we're now in a position for tying the weights back on. So because you've got the tail here, this was off the back pool wheel, which means it's your top sash weight that you're tying back on here. So we will remove. If I can see where I put my knife. Yep. Perfect, thank you. We'll put the top sash weights back in place. So feed this through. If it does become frayed like that, a wee tip you can do, if you have a lighter to hand, you can melt the tip of the rope and actually compress it. Because it's a wax corded rope, the wax helps it go down to that point. So now we've got this rope attached. What we do here, tie, tie this on, you use a figure of eight knot. So you go under, over, and you can see that's resembling a figure of eight. Put it back through here, and then pull that down, and tie that on. To get these into the pocket, take some of the strain of the weight by pulling the rope, and offer it up into the pocket space. So now what we need to do is measure the existing um, rope check sizes on the top sash. So the rope check size is this size down here. When you're taking a size, measure both sides. They do. They, when they router them, they don't make them the exact same size. So to the bottom there is around 420 mil. Don't know if this side's the same. So 420 mil is too big there. You can see that sitting past the rope check there. So we need to come up slightly, and you can see there's already a pencil mark there. So that is 400 mil. This is the smaller side, so we can work off of this side. So 400 mil. What you then need to do is get yourself a pencil. And measure from the top of the case measure down 400 mil and put a mark on the case that's the size of your rope check and you do that on both sides so top of the case down 400 mil what you're then doing is Lift this weight off the bottom of the pocket a couple of inches. So I'll put my thumb where that 400 mil mark was. I pull it down a couple of inches. This can be a, a roughly, you don't need to measure it bang on. I transfer a mark onto the rope. So. What you then do is pull the rope all the way up till it hits the back of the pulley wheel. So you can hear that, it's now hitting the pulley wheel. Again, you drop this down another couple of 
couple inches. Hold the rope in place and then stick a tack in to your case. When you're tacking it, try and tack it for somewhere you're not going to see the, the nail hole. So that holds it in place. I can then, that pencil mark that I marked on, that's where we then cut the rope. So that's this side of the top sash rope. Eh, aye, that side of the top sash rope. Do the same on the opposite side. So that that side of the rope that you marked. Yep. Wasn't measured against anything. It was. So all we had there was on the on the sash you had a, a rope check there, which is down, which is 400 mil. Yes. So what we done there was measured from the top of the case down, down 400 mil. So if you imagine when the window's in the close position, that is the bottom of the rope check. Yes, but the mark that you put on the rope, uh -huh. how did you choose that? So what I, I'll show you on this side, so when tie these on, oh. <laughs> right, cut that straight end off that rope. So, same idea with this one, figure eight, under, over, create the figure of eight, and then back through the bottom. Take the strain up and offer the weight in the pocket. So, what you were asking there was for doing the mark. What I'm, what I'm doing is I'm lifting the weight up off the bottom of the pocket a couple inches and then I'm push, marking that 400mm pencil mark onto the rope. Oh, I see, right. Um, yeah, the yeah, reason you do this... Transfers from the... Ah, yeah. So right. the reason you you, um, right. you lift it up off the bottom of the pocket a couple hundred mil is over time the ropes will stretch. They'll, they'll never stretch a couple yeah, inches. Yeah. but. In these old tenement buildings, the amount of dust and debris that gathers in the pockets is unbelievable. I've actually came across when I've removed weights, a dead bird within the pocket. How it's ever managed to get in there, I don't know, but it, they do. So, that's me pulling it all the way down till it's hitting the pulley wheel. Drop it back up a couple inches again, and then attack that. So you can see that that's my 400mm mark there on the rope. We cut that. So, bottom sash. <coughs> Usually your bottom sash weights are heavier. Your bottom sashes tend to be bigger than what your top sashes are. So, to make sure you're using the right weights, what you do is you weigh, you weigh your sashes. You can put them on a set of scales, you can use luggage scales to find out the overall weight of the sash. Your top sash, whatever weight your top sash is, you want your weights to be two pound lighter. So let's say for argument's sake, this is a 20 pound sash. You want your weights to be a pound lighter either side, so you'd have nine pound. Reason being is, if the weights are slight, sorry, uh, that's the wrong way around, wrong way around. You want your weights to be two pound heavier for the top sash. So if that's a 20 pound sash, you'd want your weights to be 22 pound. Reason being is, the weights are heavier than the bottom sash, and that keeps the sash up. When you do the bottom sash, you want it to be the opposite way. You want the sash to be heavier than the weight, so the sash stays in a fixed position. If, you have, if the weights are too heavy for the bottom sash, the window will naturally lift itself. So, tying your... Sorry, so, the, so if the sash is £20, each of the weights is £21? No, so you half it, sorry. Okay. So, so if your, if your um, sash is £20, yeah. you divide it by two, and that's you have it equal to either side. For the top, uh, top sash, you want the weights to be £2 heavier. So a pound heavier either side. Okay. And the weights are heavier, if you've got to think the weights are hanging in the pocket, 
they're heavier, they're keeping the sash in the closed position. For your bottom sash, you want, because the sash is down, you want the sash to be two pound heavier than overall of the weights. If the weights were heavier, the opposite would happen. The weights would naturally pull the window up. So, same idea, figure of eight, through the bottom. That's been a bit easier this time. So bottom sash, same idea, measuring the glazing check, but this time we're actually measuring, excuse me, from the bottom up. So when you're when you're thinking of doing this, measuring the glazing checks, top sash is measure top down. Bottom sash, bottom up. So take our size from the sill to the bottom of the rope check, which is about 510 mil. Double check the other side, make sure that's the same. This one's considerably longer, this one goes down to probably about 420, but you need to keep them the same, so again, we'll say 510. This time, measure up off the sill, 510 mil. Now, you can see there's already a pencil mark on the case. Same there, 510 mil. And again, there's a pencil mark on the case. So this time, we lifted on the top sash. We lifted a couple of inches off the ground. This time, you can pull it all the way up. Until you hit the pulley wheel, drop it down a couple of inches. This side, because we've got the case, I don't need to hold it or stand on it, I can let that hang itself. Get the knife. In fact, what I'll do is I'll pull that back down, let it go up a couple of inches, and then we'll mark this 510 mil. So I've got my thumb on the mark, pull the rope up so it can grip it with the rope, with the clutch, sorry. Mark that 510 and then cut that with a knife. process under over create the figure eight through the bottom what you want to do when you're tying these knots is make sure you've not got a big tail on the end there if you've got a big tail there it's just asking for it to snag or get caught on other weights when it's within the pocket space into the pocket this time i'll need to tack this because i've not got a clutch so pull this all the way down, all the, the exit, um, pull the wheel, drop it up a couple of inches and then we can stick a tack in this. Again I'm pulling this out of the way so I'm not tacking it on the case where you'll see the nail hole. And then we cut the rope. On that mark, it's 510 mil. So that's the weights on and tied. We can get rid of the sash cord. And we're 
ready for starting to put sashes back in. So what we do here is put nails into the sash rope, sash cord. So top sash, generally they're lighter. I normally put three three nails within your um, top sashes. So what you want to do is come up off the, up the rope, approximately 40 mil, stick a tack in. You want to put your nails in now because when you're reinstating the window, trying to nail it and hold the sash at the same time can be a bit of a nightmare. Mm. Spacing your nails, you want to just keep them again approximately 40 mil, 50 mil spaced between the nails. What you don't want to do is have a nail here, a nail here, and a nail here. If you imagine that's nailed on your case, uh, one of the sashes, sorry, you're only going to get the distance between there and the pulley wheel because the nails won't pass mm. through the pulley wheel. So that's that side nailed, release those. And then you do the exact same on the opposite side. So you're up. 40 mil or so, tap through the rope. And we'll do the same for the bottom sash. Um, that isn't a heavy bottom sash, I'm only going to put three tacks in it. If you're doing sashes that are a lot heavier, you better put a, an extra nail on it. <coughs> and on the other side, I don't need to nail this because we've got the clutch here and what I explained earlier, we've got the simplex fittings. It's a different fitting that goes on this end of the sash, which I'll explain later. So now we can reinstate the sashes. So top sash. <coughs> Remove the existing ropes. How's you find easier? Just a set of pliers. Hold the rope and just spin it down. Just continually keep turning it. That naturally pulls the tacks out. Other side. <coughs> so that's that removed. So top sash, make sure you hover the right way. I've done it before, I'm not gonna lie. Nailed it, stood back and back to the front. So what we're doing here is, that was our mark, which is a 400 mil from the top of the sash down. What you need to do here is grab your cord and you hold the bottom of the cord on that 400, it was 400 or 410, I can't remember what it was off the top of my head now, but you hold that in line there. So, tack that in place. same on the other side. So I'll explain to you guys, you've never seen it there. That was our 400 mil mark. What you then do is cord. But what I'm going to do to make your life a bit easier here is this nail that we took in, we can now release that. So that helps take some of the tension off that side of the window. So top sash, cord, line that up with our pencil mark at the bottom there. Stick attack in. Okay. Offer this up into the case. Move 
is the tack from this side. And before you go any further, just, just check that it's sliding. It holds itself. If it's dropping, you know it's, it's way to draw. So that's that in place. Draft proofing your existing part components of your uh, sash and case window. So these are your part beads. Somebody's already draft proofed these. As you can see here, there's a brush insert. And I've got again a couple of samples there of a carrier that's been inserted and the brush slides into that. So you can reuse your existing parting beads and you can try and feed them through a router to create a check big enough to take the carrier. These are have been replaced at some point. The old parting beads, they're really fragile, they're brittle, trying to get them out. If you can get them out as one, well done. Um, you can route with them if you can. You can buy these straight off the shelf and they're so much easier to work with. Not having to worry about splitting them when you're trying to get them in and out. So, what we do is reinstate your pocket covers. So that's your left hand cover. And, uh, cover there. Put your parting beads in. So, what you do here is because these have been uh, draft proofed, you have to miter them at the meeting rail. Reason being is, if that was one continuous length of parting bead, like that, this has got a carrier on it, but I've not put a brush on it just for showing you today. If you put that in place, all you've got there is a brush touching the top sash. Yeah, there's no brushes against the bottom sash here. That's essentially a gap where drafts can come in. So if you are draft proofing them, you miter them on the meeting rail. That means that that can sit. I'm going to attack. These should hold themselves in place. Sometimes they fall out. So that's in, and you can see the brush is tight against the sash. This one goes in, and you can see that that would be tight um, against the bottom sash, the brush. So you gently tap these in place. Like I say, these should hold, but I'm going to stick a tack in the top sash here because it's not, it's not great if I'm honest, this one. If you are required to tack them in place, don't put nails where the pocket covers are. When you're trying to release these, it pulls the pocket covers out and then you have to try and separate the pocket covers from the part bead. So if you do need to tack them, stick a tack in there, stick a tack in there. I'll just make sure you're above, the, above or below the um, pocket covers. Are you using the same tacks that you use? No, so what we've got... These are your sash tacks, which is also known as a, a clout nail. That is your sash tacks there. Yep. And then what I'm using for nailing them in is just a sprig nail, 40 mil sprig nail. So they've just got small heads, you can punch those in and then a decorator can then pull them over, touch them up. What's that reel called again? The this this yes. bead here, a parting bead. A parting bead. Um, when you're draft, if you want to draft proof your sashes, I should have talked to you that when it was flat on the bench, <coughs> you can route with a check in the head of the sash here. Insert one of these carriers so it sits flush. And then you can insert a brush. This is an that looks to be an eight mil brush. You can get them in five and a half mil. You can get them in ten mil. It just varies on how drafty your windows are. You can put a thicker uh, brush in. So imagine that was routed into the head of the sash, flush. You've got your brush. That should sit in here. When your sash is in the closed position, it minimises any drafts being able to get through the case and up through the head of the sash. Again, you can do it on the meeting rail, but when you're doing the meeting rail, somebody's done this one already, and done, that's been done correctly. So you want to do the top rail of the meeting rail. Reason being is, if you've done the, the bottom rail of the top sash, when it's in the closed position, you'll never know any different. If you imagine you've got that roped, lifted up, you're always going to see a brush, which isn't a very nice finish. If you've got there, the only people who see are people outside.
and then likewise you can do the same for the batten rods which I've got a couple of samples there which I'll show you now I'm not going to put a brush in that this is just for a, a demonstration purpose today that goes in in the bottom I usually have to bend these into place to get them in and then just gently tap these Whole one. That's a whole one, yep. Yeah. So that would be if you're reusing your existing parting beads and you weren't draft proofing them. So they'd come out as one length of parting bead. Right. If you're draft proofing them, you can reuse your existing parting beads, but you'd have to route it. Yes. I'll pop this one back out for it. You'd have to route it. Insert a carrier. Yes. And then insert one of the brushes. Yeah. One of those. But then when you do come to the insert, what you have to do is the same detail here. Yes. That's where the meeting rail is. Do the mitre cut. So you've got a brush pit against the top sash, and then you flip it the opposite way. Yes. So your brush is against the bottom yes. sash. Yeah. So pop that back in. Now we're in a position for putting the bottom sashes in. When we're talking about draft proofing it, you can see there that's done on the meeting rail. I don't know if this one has been done. No it's not. So again, you can route the, the bottom rail of the sash, install a carrier and put a brush in it. When that sits down tight in the cell it just stops any drafts coming through the bottom of the window. So same idea, remove the existing ropes. So that's one of the simplex fittings, which I'll show you. And the same thing, so just roll it in a set of pliers. the same, we've measured up for the rope check, this looks like it's quite far up on this side but the rope check on that side isn't anywhere near as deep. So hold up that, hold your sash cord, bottom of the sash cord and line with the pencil mark. On this side, we have got what's known as a crocodile clip for your simplex fittings. So what you're doing here is the bottom of the rope, you can see here it's got teeth on it. The whole idea of this is when your rope's in, you hold it to the bottom of the teeth and you squeeze the fittings over and try and bed the, the teeth into the cord. Now this is quite a heavy rope. Which I'm going for next time. Doing a demonstration, not to bring us out of a rope, of course. <laughs> Sorry. Get that in like that. Just compress it in. Then we want to flip it sort of 90 degrees and really try and get those teeth <coughs> dug into the rope. of this that's a little brass disc. Ah uh, yeah, so which do you have a preference for this version? Uh, to be honest the, the, the discs are better. <coughs> They're called a barrel. So what you would have there see if this will swivel around. There's rather there's a screw in there yeah. which you hooks the, the crocodile clip over. Sure. You have a core cut out there to carry those uh, barrels. 
Well, you just have to make sure you've got a deep enough style yeah. to carry the barrel. Right. You imagine you need to bow that out because yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to put in a drill bit. If you go too far, that there is the line of the glass. So if you're boring that out, if your barrel's too deep, you hit the glass and then that's you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give yourself another problem. <laughs> um, but, but do you think they're more secure? The barrels feels, are better. The barrels are definitely better. I've seen these, a lot of times these actually slip. Right. Teeth aren't stuck into the rope enough. And over time, the weight of the sashes, the weight of the weights within the pockets, it can yeah, actually yeah. pull these out. Okay. So definitely, if you're using a barrel, um, it's definitely a more secure option. There's a plastic block, a square plastic block version. I've got two different versions of that. Um, it's like a rectangle. To be honest, I've not seen the plastic block version. I've only ever came across a barrel of or, or the crocodile clips bit. Yeah. Is it the same idea? Is there a check out the side there's of the sash? There's a plastic insert and then the, a rectangular block that goes on the rope. Right. And they sit in each other. And you put off it up. So that, that's the same so idea as the barrel. Yeah. So the barrel's just a circular hole on the side of the sash. Yeah. And then the sash cord just comes through and then it's the same idea. You just off it up. That's me compressed those teeth in. Um, what's a good practice to do is if you can get yourself a, um, a nail punch. It's just try and actually punch the teeth into the rope just to try and help secure it a bit more further. So that's the teeth, I'm bending the rope a bit better now. So what you do, try and turn the sash so you can all see it. There's a screw in the side of the sash. Roll that right there. See that there. What you then want to do is open up your fitting, put that over the screw, and then pull that up. And that then allows you to put the bottom sash. And you can then now release the clutch and then again slide it under the top sash. Just make sure you can slide it. That's stopping there, hitting the clutch, that's as far up as that goes. If we never had a clutch there, you could lift that right up until it hits the case. Slide down and you know the weight's on the bottom and now you have to start working. So reinstate, reinstate the parting beads. Um, this side has got your easy clean hinges on it. bend these to get them into position and then gently tap this in and wide right at the bottom wash that over now if you never had easy clean hinges on you can just rely on nails and tack that into place because we've got these easy clean fittings on it I prefer to screw this this just means the weight of the window you're not just relying on nails you've actually got a screw in there which makes it a bit more robust Screw these back into place. I think it's easier to feed these bits individually before you put them back in. Um, no, it's easier to paint everything when it's in place. Okay. You would think it'd be easier, it would be easier a bit. To, you, to do that you need to get everything stripped, everything out and then you're left with an opener. You then need to board up your opening for security because okay. the time you paint these it's just your drying times for your paint. Right. Uh, you'll always find decorators paint these in situ. Um, if you've got easy clean hinges on it, it makes decorating far easier. Right. Which I'll show you just now. So that's your one side on, this other side with your thumb turn. You do a mitre detail like this at the top. This means that you can just have one thumb turn on it. You don't need to rely on any fixings because 
as you can see that trucks up the underside of this batten rod, screws in place and that physically can't fall out because of the micro detail on that batten rod. So if you're using these easy clean hinges what you need to do is lift your sash up, swivel your hinges 90 degrees and then you drop it down you get decorative screws for these, these aren't decorative screws that we put in. But you drop that down until they sit within the checks of the hinges. You then release your batten rod, thumb thumb screw, pop this out. And you swing the window inwards, you need to pull the sash cord, pull it down, and then you use the clutch to support that. Swing the sash inwards, release. The crocodile clip on the side. Should come out easier than that. There we are. And then you can swing the window inwards. So that allows you to clean the exterior of the glass, do any maintenance work to the case, paint the cells, and again the top sash or any external decoration work like you're asking, you can physically pull this sash downwards. Decorators can get in easily and paint the outside of your top sash. Do you have any tricks for um, making these actually move up and down more easily? Because... As in the sashes yeah, themselves? Yeah, the sashes, because my uh, windows have only come down so far and you can't actually get to the... To the, to the top sash. Right, well I think it. that that's... It's all too stiff. I think it's either too stiff or it's not being roped correctly. So, what we're seeing earlier with the weights, um, buttoning out within the pocket. So if you imagine, in fact, what I'll do is release this window back to where it should be. So, put your hinges in, drop your top sash. So, I'll see if I can swivel this around a wee touch. So you can see, what we've got is when the bottom sash is down, the weights are at the top. When the top sash is up, the weights are at the bottom. What you might be having is, the ropes haven't been sized properly, so when you're physically lifting the top sash up, if the ropes are too long, you might be getting to there, and the weights are bottoming out in the bottom of the pocket. So they can physically lift, or they can, no, but you're just relying on the weight of the sash. Um, I think it's actually that the wood is jamming. Just too tight, it's everything's every, too tight. Everything is too tight. And so I so Sometimes <laughs> it's the paint, isn't it? It's the paint, aye, that's it. It's just years and years and years of paint. I mean, you can add four mil, five mil onto the thickness of your paint. What you need to do is strip it. So strip your batten rods, strip your sashes out. On the side of the sashes, you can plane down the sashes. So you can take a mill or a couple of mill off either side of the sash to help it. What you just need to make sure is that your rope check's deep enough. If you take too much off your sashes, your rope check's not going to be deep enough to accommodate the rope. Okay. So then you'd have to route off a new rope check in it, or a deeper rope check. Parting beads, again, you can strip the back edge of these, so... That's a sample there with a, a carrier in it. That sits like that. If the original's too tight, you can just strip a couple of mill off it. If you're not draft proofing it, it doesn't make much difference to be honest, you can strip that off it. What you don't want to do is take too much off and allow drafts to come in. But if you strip that off it, you can then reinsert and insert and put them back in. But I, I think that's, either the ropes aren't right and the ropes are bottoming out. What, a good way to check is, when you're trying to lift the top sash up, see if you see any, like, the ropes starting to flex inwards, like that. That's a sign that the ropes, the weights are hitting the bottom of the pocket. And then what you're, huffing, actually, what you're doing is physical huffing to lift the, the window, the weights aren't counterbalancing and that's what makes them really heavy.